I'm Jeanette Yen. I'm a professor in the School of Biological Sciences, and I also direct the Center for Biologically Inspired Design. And Mike Helms is one of my co-directors, and together we are going to talk, tell you a little bit about biologically inspired design. So I'm going to start this talk with a few questions for the audience, and it's just to get your mindset ready, get you into thinking like a bio-inspired designer. Ready? What would you do if you saw an ant slip into the acid bath of a pitcher plant? Well, if you were Dr. Eisenberg of the Wyss Institute of Bio-inspired Engineering at Harvard University, you would, you would study, determine the material properties of the slick surface of the plant and invent slips, a anti-icing material for the nose cone of airplanes and rockets. What about the lowly slug? If the lubricant, what if the lubricant that the slug makes is a non-Newtonian material that acts like a solid glue at rest, but liquefies when adequate stress is applied? Andy Smith of Ithaca College invented a super sticky surgical glue inspired by the lowly slug. What if you saw bumps on the leading edge of the humpback whale fin? Would you even think to put them on the front end edge of a wind turbine to capture renewable energy from the wind at lower wind speeds and with less noise than traditional wind turbine blades? Frank Fish of Westchester, University, Westchester College heads that company. If you had discovered super hydrophobicity of the lotus plant, would you imagine that your finding would lead to over 200 patents from self-cleaning paints and pots and catheters that helps us conserve water? In fact, recent analysis by Michael Helms show that the number of bio-inspired design patents are rising exponentially as more and more organisms lead to such awe-inspiring inventions such as the roach bot that can run through a passage as narrow as two pennies thin, we support yet another practice of sustainability, preserving biodiversity. Each life form can teach us much about how to conserve materials, conserve energy, acquire water, recycle wastes. So I, Jeanette Yen, opened up my Center for Biologically Inspired Design at Georgia Tech in 2005. And now, after my center opened in 2009, Harvard got $125 million from WIS to initiate their bio-inspired engineering center with another 250 million in 2013 and another 131 million in 2019, this year, from WIS. Stanford has a BioX center. Arizona State has a biodesign center. So does Berkeley, Caltech, and several other prominent research universities. So here I am teaching our junior and, under, and senior undergrads how to use the bio-inspired design approach to invent innovative designs, relying on the superlative strategies found in nature. I have the best education tactic where I get five students from five different disciplines, biology, mechanical engineering, material sciences, biomedical engineering, and design, and they all work together in interdisciplinary teams for one semester to invent a novel bio-inspired design. I want students to come in knowing their field and to learn how to communicate to people in other fields to increase the number of serendipitous meetings between different disciplines. So I am banking on these unlikely meetings to lead to unlikely innovations in biologically inspired design. Thank you. I also work for the uh, Seismic, which is the Center for Education Integrating Math, Science, and Computing. Um, and I, my focus is education. Uh, several years ago, we got a $10,000 seed grant from the Candida Fund to develop a curriculum 
for middle school, to teach bioinspired design in middle school. We use that, that seed money to understand what effect this might have and is it possible to do this in middle school. We um, networked with the Center for Biomimetic and Bio, oh, CBBG, Center for Biomimetic and Bio-inspired geotechnics, that's it. So they provided additional seed money. We developed more curriculum. Uh, we use that curriculum and what we learn to write a grant to NSF. NSF has just funded us for a four-year, $3 million uh, grant to develop curriculum for engineers in high school. Why did they do this? I'll give you three reasons why I think bioinspired design is important for education. One, biophilia, the love of biology, right? We have a problem recruiting and maintaining underserved populations and females in engineering. So we believe that this love, this natural love of biology will pull in females and underserved uh, minorities into and maintain that interest in engineering for these students. Two, when you practice bio-inspired design, it fundamentally changes your relationship with nature, right? Instead of nature being the thing we need to save, nature is the thing that will save us. Right? It will provide the inspiration for the ideas that will save us and our planet. This is a fundamentally different mindset. Right? This engages students in a different way. When they walk down the street, they don't see trees and grasses and flowers in the same way anymore. Right? It's not that thing in the street. It's the thing that could lead to the solution that could save us, right? that could save the planet. And the third point is uh, when you design, when you look at a problem, Every problem you look at, when you describe a problem, I've been studying this for 15 years, when you think about a problem, you always think about a problem in the context of existing solutions. This is always true. Every design problem. What bioinspired design does is it provides you a new library of solutions right, to reimagine the way you think about problems. So in this grant that we have from from NSF called Birdie, we intend to see how these three elements um, affect the way high school students engage with biology over time. Thank you.